I've mentioned this before, but it, it must have been uh, just a bit of a risk for your academic career to pursue these very new ideas. And I asked you this in Paul Boyle's clubhouse room, it's about time, but perhaps you could explain again. How did you think about that risk and what made you decide to take it? Yeah, it's an interesting question because it is a risk. And I I don't know this for a fact, but I have a suspicion that maybe part of the reason why, I mean, we, we in the early days of the project, we, we got a lot of interest from people and we still do it. You know, every summer school, we get lo- loads of people applying, loads of really bright students from all around the world coming and wanting to work on the project. So it's not, it's not really a huge problem, but I, I, I do sometimes wonder how much people are put off by the thought that, you know, maybe if I do this, I'm going to somehow torpedo my, my academic credibility. <laughs> and hopefully over time, as we become more established and as the literature tree grows and so on, that, you know, that, that, that concern will become less and less relevant. But certainly it was a concern for me. I, that, that's, I, I, would yeah. be, I would be exaggerating if I said it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, so in my own case, the way I thought about it was, A, I felt like, okay, I, I had enough other, you know, my... my my PhD research was not on the physics project. It was on kind of more traditional mathematical physics. I had some other papers, you know, I had several other papers on, on sort of, again, on, on, on maybe less controversial areas, more in the sort of, in, more in the mainstream domain. So I, I sort of felt like I could afford maybe to dedicate a couple of years of my research yeah. time to working on this thing. And even if it were, a com- even if it turned out to be a complete failure, which I didn't think it was going to happen, but even in the worst case scenario where everyone comes out and says, you know, the emperor has no clothes, this is, you know, this yeah. is completely there's nothing here then you know okay it would be a bit of a blow and i would have wasted some time and you know, but what but i i suspected i could probably recover the other component of it which i which i know i did mention in 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 the clubhouse room but yeah as you say it's maybe worth worth saying again it was i kind of had this feeling of well okay to be a bit i don't know existentialist about it right so you know what why did i go into research why did i go into science it was because i you know because i wanted to investigate the nature of reality. I wanted to investigate new formalisms. I was much more excited at the possibility of really being at the, you know, being in the vanguard, being at the, at the forefront of kind of investigating some, some new model and really kind of trying to, at a very deep conceptual level, figure out what its consequences were. That seemed much more appealing to me than, you know, working in some area like, say, string theory, which, you know, which yeah. has existed for half a century, where all the low-hanging fruit has been picked and where a be- even if you're really, really smart, you know, the best thing you can really hope, you can seriously hope to do is to make some very small technical, incremental technical improvement to some, to some, some minor area. And my feeling was kind of, look, it's, it's extremely unlikely that I'm going to have a chance to do something like this again in my career. It's a bit like if, you know, in the, in the kind of early 20th century, if I'd been given an opportunity to work with people like von Neumann and Ulam and, and so on, on the development of cellular automata, or if I'd been given an opportunity to kind of work on you know, to work with people like Turing and Church and Gödel on the original development of, of Turing computation and the various other models that are equivalent to it. You know, there's a sort of, there's a golden period of maybe five or 10 years after someone has this, has a radically new idea like that, where there's yeah. a huge amount of stuff that you can do. There's so much low hanging fruit, so many, you know, so many green fields you can conquer that really, you don't actually, you know, it's unlike these more established fields, you don't have to have built up a wealth of experience. It's something where someone who's very young, who doesn't really know what they're doing can kind of jump in you don't have to be, you don't even have to be particularly good because if it's a, if it's a good formalism <laughs> you know basically if it's powerful enough you can you know you, you can you can conquer new fields without really having to do very much work the expertise of experts is very much at a, at a you know at a, at a discount or the relevance of the expertise of experts and so i i felt like it's extremely unlikely that you know if, okay, if I'm, if I'm very, very lucky, I might get one more shot to do something like this in my career, but yeah. probably not, right? Probably yeah. this, is, this is the one chance. So yeah, it was a gamble, but it was like the, you know, the potential loss was, yeah, okay, I waste a couple of years of my career and maybe my academic output suffers a little bit, but that's probably recoverable. And the potential upshot is like, you know, I get to achieve the thing that I kind of went into research to achieve in the first yeah. place. And so that Absolutely. was, you know, it, it's not, it wasn't, I'm not going to say I didn't agonize over it a bit but it wasn't in the end a hugely difficult decision yeah i wanted to ask you about that i mean when i think about what's happening now like this reframing of physics in terms of computation it does feel like this is a scientific revolution as important as you know several hundred years ago reframing physics in terms of mathematics does it feel like that to you that that's what's happening right now i think so i think i think 
that wouldn't, I mean, it's a strong statement, but I don't think it'll end up being too inaccurate. And actually, sorry, that brings me up to, that brings me on to, to, there's a very important point you make about just this general idea of reformulating laws of physics in terms of computation. Because not only does this relate to the answer to the previous question, but it also relates to the answer to the question you asked at the beginning about, one of the questions you asked at the beginning about why you think it took until 2019 to happen. I think another important point, which I forgot to mention, is that this idea, which in 2002 seemed completely alien of like, you know, that there might be some kind of intersection between physics and computation and that thinking of physical processes as computations, you know, might be a useful thing to do. That seemed really bizarre in 2002. But actually, the ideas behind quantum computation and quantum information theory, which really started to kind of take off in the, in the early, 2000, you know, early to mid 2000s, and then, uh, well, I mean, the, the sort of theoretical aspects started to take off then, and then the, the more pra- pragmatic aspects started to take off only in the last few years. You know, the, Id- the abstract theory of quantum computation, I think, made mainstream this idea that physics and computation were linked at some fairly foundational level. Right. So that suddenly the, the, the idea of saying, oh, concepts like undecidability or irreducibility might have relevance for fundamental physics seemed a lot less crazy in 2019 than it did maybe in 2002. That's interesting, yeah. And that was another reason why, in some ways, I, I felt like it was less of a risky career move than it might have been if I'd done it, you know, if I'd been, uh, you know, if I'd been sort of 20 years older or something and I had the same decision to make in 2002. I think it may have been much more risky because I wouldn't have had the fallback of saying, well, even if this all goes wrong, Maybe yes. <laughs> there's something salvageable for, uh, yeah. for, for some other areas. And, and actually, that, that, that statement about being salvageable, although it sounds a bit pessimistic, we, we've already kind of seen that, right? So there are already results that have come out of the physics project. So for instance, some of the work that I did with Manohi and Amaduri and, and Zuxis Asawala on these applications of multi-way systems to simulating quantum information, for simulating essentially quantum computations and simplifying quantum circuits and things like that, and using the causal structure of multi-way systems to do fast diagrammatic reasoning over quantum circuits. You know, that's an idea that was, was spawned from the physics project. It's really an idea that you would yeah. not really have had unless you had the intuition of the, behind the physics project. But even if the physics project turns out to be a terrible way to do physics, that's ended yeah. up having some non-trivial applications for, for quantum information theory proper that are really yeah. independent of the scientific validity of the other ideas. And my hope when I first started working on it was that there would be lots of things like that, right? And, and, and fortunately, there have been lots of sort of spin outs, which even if the, you know, if you like, even if the central trunk turns out to be poisoned somehow, uh, the, the branches <laughs> yeah. that come out of it that connect back to the rest of mainstream physics, those branches will still be okay. And that's, you know, th- yeah. th- th- that's, that's pretty much been borne out. Yeah, that's, I, I really relate to that because when I was first studying physics, which is a long time ago, long before 2002, the idea of introducing uh, computers was sort of looked at like it was cheating. Like, you know, if you used your computer to solve your equations, it's because you weren't good enough at mathematics to solve the equations yourself. It's interesting how much that shifted, and I'm sure that's a significant factor in your decision to go this way. Thanks for listening to The Last Theory. Join me for fresh insights into Wolfram Physics every other week. Subscribe to the free newsletter, podcast or YouTube channel at lasttheory.com. After all, this might be the most fundamental scientific breakthrough of our time.